All right, gonna try this for, uh, I think like the fourth time, which is kind of pathetic, but. Uh, so here's little Carl's formula as a rewind from the previous lesson. You need to know the number of terms, you need to know the first term, and you need to know the last term. And um, in this particular case, we have four terms, uh, and then the first term is obviously five, and the last term is obviously 20. And now we know that your four over two is two, and 5 plus 20 is 25, so we're really going to have 2 times 25, which it seems like it's taking forever. I wonder if I could drag this. Can I drag this? Can I jump ahead? Start holding each. What is that? Um, okay, so we got 50. Uh, I, I hope this will go faster. I'm probably telling all kinds of wonderfully cool things, but it's taking longer than I anticipated, so... I wish I could speed up the narration of this video, but uh, uh, it doesn't seem like I can. So I'm trying to do things as efficiently as possible. Um, oh, I mentioned that this is a series, and series involves the word sum. And we use plus signs to separate different terms in a series, which is not the same thing as a sequence. A sequence is a According to what we talked about before, a list of numbers. We use commas to separate values in a sequence, where we use plus signs to separate things in a sum. So plus signs for sum, commas for sequence. Um, and we'll talk about that more when we get to, toward the end of this video. So now I hope we go. Now there are, this particular question is asking for what we call summation notation. Um, let me pause me. Okay, so, uh, this is the, uh, we're starting with the first term and stopping with the fourth term. So at the top of my sigma notation, there should be a 4, um, which I should write in here. And it's, that's, that indicates my stopping point, that there are only four terms in this. Uh, and hopefully sometime soon I'll do that. Uh, in the parentheses, we'll be writing an explicit formula. This is an arithmetic uh, series, so I should use an arithmetic explicit formula. Boy, it's taking me a long time to... Put in a 4 on the top of that sigma. Wow. I wonder what cool things I'm saying, which I cannot see at this moment. Not really sure what's going on. Why can't I write a 4 in there? Seems like it's taking me forever to write a 4. Do, 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 do. Boy, I'd like to skip this part of the video, but I don't know what cool thing I'm saying. One of these days. I wish I could just fast forward this so I could narrate it at a faster speed. Oh, there we go. Something happened. So we got the first term on the bottom, fourth term on the top. That tells me my starting place and my stopping place, how many terms we have. And then, of course, we've got the explicit formula, which goes in the parentheses, which um, we I will write here in blue. We know the first term is 5, and we know the common difference is 5. What I'm about to write in the blue uh, inside those parentheses is exactly what I would expect on a test. Uh, Math Excel will expect you to simplify it. I just expect you to uh, write it just like we see on the formula sheet. First term plus common difference times n minus 1. Someday I'm going to write 5 plus 5 times n minus 1. Oh, there it is. It's coming. Yes, yes. Keep going. Common difference is 5. Yep, there we go. So that's what I would expect you to write for your summation notation. I'm going to circle it in blue here one of these days so you can see what I exactly what I would expect you to write on your quiz or test question for the summation notation. The extra stuff with little Carl that I did at the beginning, that was uh, simply for fun. Uh, just to kind of review what we did on the previous video. Come on, one of these days I'm going to circle it. 
You would think I would get my blue ink pen out and circle that doggone thing instead of just waiting around. Here it comes, maybe. Oh, man. Okay, so I see I circled it in blue, therefore that's what I would expect on the test. Now, question two, um, we know the first term, we know the last term, but we don't know how many terms there are. So that's the first thing we're going to do is figure out how many terms there are. We need an explicit formula for finding the number of terms. And that explicit formula, generically speaking, is what I'm writing on screen in the blue right now. But we know that the first term is 5, and we know the common difference is 2. Uh, we do not know what n is. That's what we're trying to find. And that is equal to the number of, the term that I'm looking for is 33. Now that's not the 33rd term. We're trying to find out which term 33 is. So we're going to subtract 5. We're going to divide by 2. So 28 divided by 2. Um, I wish I could play this at higher speed while I re-record this since it seems like it's going forever. And uh, that's going to give me 14 equals n minus 1. And uh, so I'll know that there are 15 terms. Just let me know when it starts getting to the important stuff. Fifteen terms, so I can immediately cross off every one of those that does not have fifteen terms. So if it's got fourteen or sixteen terms in it, uh, I can try. I can get rid of those, and now I've got three. Really, only three choices. Uh, we know that if we plug in a one, we're supposed to get a five. Um, and if you plug a one into questions or answer choice C, uh, you get two times one plus three, which is five. So that does not eliminate choice C. Um, and if you plug in a 1 into letter F, you get 3 times 1 plus 2, which is 5. So that does not eliminate that. But if I plug it into G, it does eliminate it because it's not equal to 5. So now I go to the next one. Plug in a 2, I'm supposed to get 7. Well, that works out for letter C, but it does not work out for letter F. So I know that we are dealing with choice C. Okay, let's see. Ooh, why are we going backwards? Okay, so uh, we're trying to figure out which one the last term is, so we know how many terms there are. 61 is equal to the first term, plus the common difference, times n minus 1. Of course, we're going to subtract 5 to the other side, like we did the last time, and got 56. I shouldn't say subtract 5, we just subtract the, la the first term, whatever that is. And then, of course, we're going to divide by 4 in this case. When we divide by 4, we end up with 14 equals n minus 1. <coughs> Therefore, we know that we're dealing with 15 terms, so we can get rid of any choice that doesn't have 15 terms in it, which narrows down to only three choices. We know that if we plug in a 1, we're supposed to get a 5, and if we plug in a 1 into letter D, it works. You get 5. 
If I plug a 1 into H, it works. I get a 5. If I plug a 1 into G, it don't work. So I can get rid of choice G. Now I plug in a 2. I'm supposed to get 9. That does not work for letter D at all. But it does work for H. So choose choice H in this case. So um, we're using little Carl's formula because that's what you use for arithmetic series. Yep, little Carl. Uh, we need to know how many terms there are. There's 100 terms. We need to know the first term. And we need to know the last term. So we know there's 100 terms. How do we find the, one, the first term? That's easy. Plug in a 1. What is 2 times 1 minus 5? 2 times 1 minus 5, well, that's easy. That's negative 3. Someday I'm going to write that down. 2 times 1 minus 5. Ah, oh, snoozer. All right. Now I need to plug in 100 to find the last term. 2 times 100 minus 5. That'd be 195. And then I can type it on my calculator. And I think we get 9,600 for that. Uh, one of these days they're going to get 9,600. Man, it seems like it's taking forever while they're trying to calculate that. I wonder if I just left it on accidentally. Come on, give them the 9,600. 9,600. Awesome. All right, so we know there's 100 terms in this one, too. Plug in a 1. 2 times 1 minus 6, that's negative 4. And then we'll plug in a 100. 2 times 100 plus my, or minus 6 is 194. Type on the machine, I think you get about 9,500. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that one. Okay, now we'll... All right, let's see here. Looks like we got 70 terms. Um, and we plugged in a 1. We got negative 1. Whoa. So plugged in, we got 70 terms. Plugged in a 1. We got negative 1. Plugged in a 70, and we got 137. So this is really 35 times 136, which I believe is like uh, 4760 or something like that. One of these days it'll show up on the screen. Question 9 is your amphitheater question. You can see there's a first term of 17. Uh, 17 seats in the first row, 21 in the second, 25 in the third. That's a, a common difference of 4, so we know that it's arithmetic. It's got 33 rows. So we know, you, using little Carl's formula, that we have 33 rows. We know the first one's 17. We don't know what the last one is. That's the big part of this question that we're trying to figure out here.
Um, let's see here. Uh, question 9, continuing on, we know that the first term is 17 and the common difference is 4. So uh, we can, and then there, we're looking for the 33rd term. So we're using the explicit formula to do that. And that's 17 plus 4 times 32. Um, and I think we're going to find out that it's 145. And then we can use that. Um, once we find that it's 145, we can we can go forward and use that in Little Carl's formula to find the la that the sum of those. It's going to be like 2763. I went on to ask another question that's complete. That's you know, if you if you were charging twenty dollars per ticket for uh, all of the seats in this particular amphitheater. How much money would you make before you had to pay anybody like your ticket your sale you know your ticket takers your ushers your um your stagehands your entertainers or whoever's at the same theater so um that's what i was asking the kids to do here so after we found out that there were 2673 tickets or 2763 i actually think I mean, then we multiplied that by 20 to find out uh, how much money? I think it was 53000 something, uh, which shall appear on screen here one of these days. Someday. Oh, my goodness. It's taking forever. Um, we'll, we'll find out here shortly. Oh, come on, man. It is taking forever. Still not there? Wow. Still out there. Wow, what is going on here? Okay, so a sequence versus a series. Remember we talked about how a sequence is a list of numbers where a series is a sum. A series uses pluses. Sequence uses commas. This is definitely a series, so we got rid of the two choices, A and B. It has the dot, 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 which indicates that it is going on forever, so it's an infinite series. Um, you may have a question like that show up. and Of course, if you go back and look at some of the other examples, you'll see what I, what I mean by... Uh, infinite versus finite. Um, in fact, there's a lot of other finite examples here. Uh, question number one is finite because it has a stopping point. There's only four terms. Uh, question two is finite. Uh, question, because it's it's got, we figured out 15 terms. So it's definitely a finite series. That's a finite series in number five. Question you know, 8 is a finite series with 70 terms. 9 is a finite series with 33 terms. Uh, I'm going to draw here uh, an example of a sequence uh, in a moment uh, because I just want to show you the difference.
Okay, so uh, here's your sequence. It's finite. There's only five terms in the sequence. It's got commas in between. So that's your example that you're talking about um, for a finite sequence. What in the world is going on? Let's go to the next question. I got a made-up question here at the end that I'll show you shortly. Come on. One of these days is going to give you a nice, cool equation here. Must have been trying to calculate it. Okay, so it's arithmetic going up by three. And we know the first term, we know the last term, so we need to figure out how many terms there are. So, uh, much like we did before. So, if we're writing this in summation notation, we know that we're starting with the first term. We just need to figure out how many terms there are, because we don't know what number to put on the top. And we do know what, we could use our knowledge of explicit formulas to figure out what goes in those parentheses, because uh, we know the first term is 2, and we know the common difference is 3. As you can see, instantaneously, you see the rest of the work there. Uh, to figure out there were 55 terms. We had 162 over 3. Oh, sorry. Um, we started out with 164 equals first term plus common difference times n minus 1. And once we solved for n, we figured out there were 55 terms. If I asked you to solve or find the sum, this would be using little Carl's formula. We have all the pieces. We know that there are 55 terms. We know the first term was 2, and we know the last term was 164, and so we can plug them all in uh, to, get, to get our sum, which was 4,565. Thank you for watching today's video on uh, the arithmetic series.